for the Eurometal Express show and here we are in Mexico City and I am with Oscar from Hammerfall. How are you? I'm um, really good, thank you. It's, it's the last, last show of the tour and uh, it's been a really, really, really good tour. So, and we haven't played in two days now as well, so I'm kind of anxious to get, get going. Yeah, I mean, do you mean like for all South America, Europe, yeah. how has it been? Yeah, for, for this tour it's been incredible. Uh, we toured a couple of times with that guy before, but it was uh, nine years since last time, so you know it's and it's about time now. And Golf Heart, I didn't really know the guys before, but they they are really cool guys, it's very very cool. It's been a breeze to to do this tour together. Yeah. And after all these years, how the feeling to come back here to Mexico? <laughs> uh, well, the, it, it's been seven years since we did any tour of, of Latin, Latin America, and uh, it's it's been fantastic. On every every show, I mean, I guess it's all you you remember, you forget some things, and then when you you're being reminded of them, you uh, you understand how much you really appreciated them because you didn't have them for a couple of years. Yes. And uh, in Mexico, it's okay. It's now uh, <laughs> uh, we got a, uh, some presents from a from a fan mm -hmm. today, which was. I have to say the, the best, coolest present I've ever had, uh, that I've ever gotten from, from anybody with Hammerfall. Uh, it was a custom made uh, Lucha Libre uh, mask. Yes. That, bracelets. Yeah, did, with Hammerfall sign and hammers up here. And wow. it, was, it was made, he said, by a real, like a professional guy who makes masks for uh, Sin Cara, for example, and oh, all those. So, so it, was, it, was, it's, it's, it was such an honor and it was so cool. So. I, I might wear it on stage today. Yeah, you must. I mean, I think that they will be so happy if you wear it. I, like, probably I, they are helping yeah. to do it. So, okay, let's going to talk about the hmm? city now. Sure. I mean, I've been listening and reading and hearing that a lot of great reviews. So, do you think that the break helps you? Extremely much. Uh, it was designed to, to give us a break from the pressure, basically, mm -hmm. of... Uh, of being constantly being doing something like either you're re writing material or recording it or you're promoting it or mm -hmm. you're on tour promoting the album and then you start again with the, the cycle mm -hmm. uh, so there's never really any I mean we have time off of course but there's never any time where you feel like you don't that, that you don't have to do anything right uh, yeah. which is kind of important sometimes uh, and especially in a, in a thing like that we're, it's, it's a creative business and, and if you want to keep the creative juices flowing then you have to do something too to, to um, appease them, so to speak. Uh, so this was extremely necessary and very valuable. I don't think this album would have sounded any, anything like, like it if, unless we did this break. So it was oh. perfect for us. Yeah, and um, about the title, because I was talking with the guy in London about the R, the, the way that you read it. Yeah. So some people say it's like our revolution and some might say revolution. So. Well, what we thought was a combination of revolution and evolution. This mm -hmm. R evolution, it was some guy in a, I did an interview with in the, the beginning of, I think it was an American or, or maybe Australian, mm -hmm. who said, is this, do you mean this R evolution? And I, I never thought about it. I never crossed my mind that you uh -huh. could read it that way. But it was a pretty good take on it, you know. That, that's what I like with these things. You can, you, can, you, you, um, everybody can make their own inter interpretations of what you're doing and that's why I don't like explaining lyrics or, or explaining why why does Joachim sing this in this song uh, you know make your own interpretation of it that, that's all, that's the whole thing uh, so it's, it's actually revolution or, or evolution as a com combination of those two words okay that's a great and about the video the Hector skin I mean I've seen that you have this kind of effort on videos it's like amazing and no mostly metal bands do that so what's your inspiration why do you keep doing this well, we um, our first videos were made just for fun I mean very little budget we didn't have any we didn't think anybody was gonna air them most before the album was the first album was released so we had no idea what's gonna happen uh, the second uh, or the second time we did any video was for Renegade and that turned out to be our biggest break in Sweden. Uh, Renegade was on, on the video chart lists uh, for, for, for weeks uh, at a time, number one. Uh, and that was unheard of for a metal band, in Sweden, a Swedish metal band, so it was really, really good for us. 
And we started something with Renegade, and we had something that we have wanted to continue our vision of this is how a heavy metal video is supposed to be, or how we perceive it to be anyway. Like a mini action movie with parts and yes. you know things happening, and then just a fun experience for, 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 for watching it. And when we were, set, uh, we were planning this Hector Sim video, we, uh, we had a meeting with, with the, the guys who, who, uh, who did the video, mm -hmm. which were people we never worked with before. So it was like a get to know you kind of meeting. And uh, we started talking about this is what we want, and I thought about it this way, and, and then somebody came up with what, well, what if, we, if we do this, and you know how it works, and then just f this great idea came out of it, uh, uh, to do it like with paintings and make them come alive, the, the album covers and all that. And I, I'm, I'm very, very happy with how that turned out. I think it's, it's uh, the perfect video we could have done at this time. One with I have still a question about it because Hector actually looks like some characters of comics like Thor or Doctor Doom. Are you a fan of comics? I used to be a, a big fan of that when I was younger. Uh, I when I was a kid, my brother is seven years older, so he had all these Superman and all those those that type of comics like mm -hmm. from from the sixties and seventies. Yes. And uh, so I read a lot of those mainly from the seventies. And then uh, when I got older. Uh, I had those, uh, the Marvel comics, of course, I, I was into that for a while, uh, but I, I've always liked comics. Hulk has always been my favorite, The Incredible Hulk, this is my, like, I don't know why, I just, he's my hero, so, well, not heroes, <laughs> yeah. dumb word for that, but he's the coolest <laughs> superhero of them all. And the funny thing with Hulk is, there's, as you know how, how it goes, the more you hit him, the angrier he gets, the angrier he gets, the stronger he gets. So basically you can't, you can't basically defeat him even in the end, obviously. Yes. Um, and I have one more important thing to say about this, and that is that Batman is not a superhero, he doesn't count. Because he's a normal human being who's just great at fighting, and he, so he doesn't count. Then all this bullshit about Superman versus Batman coming out. <laughs> yes. If anybody knew any of the backstory of this and took it seriously, they would know that there's like literally nobody can touch Superman unless they have kryptonite. So unless Batman has kryptonite, he's in for an ass kicking of his life. <laughs> he's going to be in trouble. Yeah. Okay, and returning to Hector, can you tell me something more about him? I mean, he's been like in, with you all these years, so... Well, he's, like, he's been kind of like a sixth member of the band, so, sort of, because he's been on all, almost all of the album covers and many of the singles. Um, we created little storylines for him within the the context of the of the paintings. Like for example, in the, on Horse on Fire, the single, mm -hmm. uh, he stands looking at a lake of fire, and then some his, his nemesis sort of is born out of this lake. And then on the Crimson Thunder album, the album cover, which came right after, then they are fighting because now he's yeah. So <laughs> these sorts of things, but there's not really he, he's he's. He embodies everything that Hammerfall is, basically. That, that's the way I look at it. He's the ultimate Templar. He's the one yeah. to represent Hammerfall. Yes. Okay, we're getting short of time, so what's the plan for you now with Hammerfall? Well, um, we basically just started the tour. Uh, mm -hmm. We call the tour the Worldwide Revolution. Mm -hmm. And it started in uh, Russia uh, two weeks ago, and will continue until, I guess, throughout the end of the next year. We haven't really decided when we're going to stop it, but. Uh, the next plan is for, for us to go back and ha have a, a great Christmas and then go out on tour again in Europe for a month in January. And uh, you know, then we have big things coming up, but um, nothing like we don't have any real long tours planned that, because they are not official yet. Ah, okay, <laughs> but there well, are no breaks now. No, no, no. Okay, no, you're no. keep going. Now we, yeah, now we had a break. For one break in 15 years, then after ne the next 15 years we'll have the next <laughs> That's break. Amazing. So we have come for, for a long yes, while. Yes. Don't worry, yes. we'll, we'll be around for a while. Okay, thanks. So, Oscar, it's been amazing to talk with you. It's like, seriously, it's such a dream. So, thank you, and we will keep in touch. And yeah, see great. You. Uh, I gotta go and get ready. I'm not, I'm, I'm not gonna wear this on stage tonight. Okay, you have I, to. As, you as much as mask. I want to. Yeah, your mask. And the yeah, the mask will come at the end of the show. Yeah, I'm also pretty so happy if you wear it. Okay, All right, well, so nice meeting you guys. Okay. Take care. Bye. Bye.